Hi guys, it's Drew. So I'm back here with this week's video of Gaming Magic and this week we're talking about co-creating with characters that are from the game system that you're choosing. So as I have mentioned before, I'm working with the D&D system but you can use any game whether it is um, if it's console based, an RPG tabletop game, um, a card game even. Really like your imagination can go to so many places. But um, in this series and from here on out, I'm going to be referring to any sort of um, examples um, through my own examples and my own experience through working with a particular character I've built up. And I think that will be a great way to show you guys how you can go about doing this. Uh, another thing I want to mention is that my gaming series is going to be going um, monthly from now on as opposed to weekly. Um, the next three months are dedicated to university, finishing part of my degree, starting another one, and also I'm in a flagship program, and I need to do work experience and other things like that. So, busy life, <laughs> and I just want to let you guys know that so that if you're looking for next week's episode, which will be about next month, is um, mapping out your quest, and sort of by quest I mean the adventure of your life and the area of focus that you want to bring your character and this gaming world into. So let's get started. So when you're thinking about um, what character you want to co-create with you can come at it from two points that I see. You can come at it from the point of working with the character as a guide um, for example, I might again choose my wizard or I might choose a cleric or I might um, pick somebody who is on my team who is considered in the game as a bit more um, higher up the hierarchy than I am, especially if they have more skills or have different skills or le um, different level skills as well. Now with d, &D I think that for the majority of what I've read, you start with level one. Um, but you can start at different levels as well. Um, in terms of using my character and creating my character, I've gone with all the level 1 information. So you can also choose um, whether you want to work with an, a protagonist or an antagonist. So you could go with the main game character who you play with, um, specifically like with console games or um, in terms of D&D, the character that you would create to play and campaign with, or you can do the opposite, like I said, with the antagonist and um, their enemies or villains, or maybe they are not necessarily villains, maybe they are just not even enemies as well, they could be people who just make things difficult for your characters. And through this kind of thing, you can um, definitely explore things like shadow work. So if you're working with villains um, to work things out with uh, in your practice or work things out in your own life, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually use the villain archetype and the energy to um, understand yourself and understand people around you and understand the world. Uh, because everything is polarity um, and alignments. And I'm definitely going to make a video about alignments at some point as well because I think um, I love the alignment system in particular in a lot of RPG games because it um, is great for magic and figuring out where you sort of feel like you sit at certain times in your life because we're not all good or we're not all evil. Um, but those are really great things to explore in a character as well. Primarily when I chose to make my character, um, I decided not to go down the evil route um, because my belief and my magical practice revolves around keeping things um, as neutral as possible, as balanced as possible while understanding those polarities. Um, I think it's fun definitely when I'm actually playing a game um, to be playing corrupt characters because that's always fun and I do that when I write my stories. Um, when I'm working on my novels I obviously have a cast of characters and some of them are heroic and some of them are just downright corrupt and I enjoy writing those characters but uh, I don't necessarily want to embody the corrupt energy walking into um, certain areas of my life especially when uh, I'm 
sort of bring it back to uh, using their characters to grow as a person. So those are a few things that you can do with um, characters or op um, options that you can choose. Obviously, like if you have other alternatives, definitely do that, play with that. Um, the whole idea is to play with the characters and their personalities and traits and which leads me to using the tools that you have um, to create the character. You don't have to build this thing from scratch as in like you don't have to pull all your other magical resources together and um, create a character from there. The whole point of using gaming magic uh, and games in magic is to be able to use the resources that you do have as portals for creativity. So for example, I have the D&D Player's Handbook, one of my favourite books. I sadly sleep with my books in my bed, but um, I love it because it's given me a chance to, both like in terms of being a writer, like to think about the different kinds of characters that I have, because there's sometimes when I'm actually creating um, products or creating characters or working uh, in terms of like archetypes and groups and things like that. I tend to am, like use and am drawn to like similar archetypes, so it's really good to ex like explore different archetypes, especially when you get to things like um, the backstories of characters and their races and classes. So use whatever resources that you do have. I mean, if you look online, there is um, you can get these uh, PDF form. You can get them discounted. Uh, look at uh, the official sites for the games that you're on, look at forums. If you're a gamer, you probably already do these things, um, but if you're new to gaming and wanting to like have somewhere to look, definitely start looking at forums and resources. A lot of uh, places will also have like free resources as well. So like, for example, um, I printed out <coughs> the player's companion for Elemental Evil because later on down the track, I want to explore some of the um, alignments with elemental beings and energies and things like that because it's something that I already work with in my magical practice. So really just rely on those and if you have never seen a, um, a guidebook or what they look like or what kind of things they're involved, every one of them is different, they need to be because obviously this is a game. but. Um, why I love D and D is they also have illustrations, which I just am in love with as well. But um, let me see if I can find my race. I should have prepared this earlier. So, um, for example, let's just go with Tiefling. So you'll have like a little, uh, like an inspirational script. For like a backstory or a story that you can already start with and then you sort of find out about their ancestry and bloodlines um names family names lineage uh what they like what their main purpose is which i find is fantastic for choosing characters because if you're if you're looking for something to start with um or you're looking for an area that you really feel like you want to work with but you're not quite sure how to find words for it so, for example, um, this particular being or species is self-reliant and suspicious. So those are two really different um, areas that can come up in your life and your magical practice as well, around trust, around independence, around communities, um, around being uh, like you know, self-employed or anything like that. So you can start with those kinds of areas as well and focuses. And they also have traits, and that's what I'm going to be talking about next. So you want to build from the character's backstory. Um, a good game will definitely have resources about their backstory, because uh, whether it's made up by the company itself or by um, staff or by people who love the game so much and have already just created like a massive fandom about it. You can find backstories, you can find alternative stories where the characters play out, um, you can find their character traits, their personality, um, 
like a support team, everything you can possibly think about that character, you can use those for. So when I started creating my character, I decided that I was going to use a Dragonborn, and there were a few reasons why I chose the Dragonborn um, class, race, race, sorry. One of them is because I love dragons, and in other RPG systems and games, I had tended towards going towards um, Draconian heritage. Um, I have dabbled with some of the starseed energy in my spiritual practice with um, Draconian energy. I've done Celtic research and work with dragons. Like part of my personality is very equipped to be working with dragons so that was one of the things that I wanted to work with too not because it was comfortable but because I wanted to explain expand on my understanding of how you know dragons have shifted things in my life like the mythology the history the fantasy like I just love dragons like I love them but there were two things that made me really really hooked on using this um, particular race one is that they grow really, really fast. Uh, and so for me, adapting that um, Dragonborn persona or character or whatever, I decide to use. Because I'm going into areas of my life where I want to work with my magic to bring about really fast changes in terms of um, internal thinking, belief systems, but also in terms of um, navigating new terrain, learning new skills, being adaptable, especially when I'm going out into the workplace when I perceive that I would never actually physically work in certain environments. Um, I thought I'd always work from home, but I'm exploring doing both so that I can become a stronger person and grow faster. Um, and that's really important to me. So taking on that attribute, like I like that the Dragonborn um, matures faster um, than a lot, of, a lot of the other classes. So that was something that I wanted to draw upon, the energy I wanted to draw upon. And the second thing is the alignment. So they have an extreme alignment. They either have a good or evil player, um, decision to make out of those polarities. And again, like I said, while I don't believe in there being such black and white polarities, I thought it would be interesting to explore in terms of shadow work, in terms of psychology and therapy and all that sort of stuff in my own personal life, how I felt about those things and what direction those things lead me in. Um, I'm definitely not clean person, like, as in, like, I have a history, I have my dark side, I have recovered and been in recovery programs from addictions, so, like, those aspects have played out in my life so um where where is my alignment and what is my alignment now and how do i use that character to um, work on that alignment and balancing it out like a lot of this um magical work is about finding a balance in life um this world can be a really dark place how do you um, balance that out in yourself and also how do you really come to terms with the fact that you're not just good or you're not just bad and the stigma and successes and all those kind of things that come up with that so those are two of the reasons why i choose to work with that class race i keep saying class but we know what we're talking about so yeah and along uh, along with that i decided that i wanted to do um both the backstory and the class so i decided to work with a druid um, why I decided to work with a druid, I practice druidry, like, I am a druid, so I work with that energy anyway. Again, following along with this, um, sort of balancing this out, I wanted to work with things that I identified with and needed to strengthen, and also to remind me and ground me in some of the things that I forget to focus on, um, as a druid, in terms of, like, working, uh, on sustainability and earth-based practices and finding environments both working and volunteer um, based where I can bring those character energies out. Same with animals. Um, the druids in D&D &D 
are very connected with animals, very connected with the land and trees and ogums and things like that. So it's really utilising an already built system, an already built character trait to um, work with and remind me how to use these archetypes. And I won't go too much about the background of mine. I did decide to use a sage. Um, I think being a sage is pretty self-explanatory. If you read fantasy or you work magic, like magical sage. <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah. So I wanted to just make a quick mention as well. Like you don't just have to use like the handbooks and guidebooks. One of the things that I am also looking to explore is things like these RPG books, which I found. Um, it already has the sheets and action steps and all these kind of cool things, pictures, maps in them as well. So if you don't like want to play an actual game as big as D&D or you don't really like console games or you just want to explore something different, there are also these alternatives out here. I mean, I think this is pretty old school. Um, I don't even know when it's made. Like the 70s but um i'm pretty sure you could find like updated versions of these kinds of things as well so that is also fun and they have characters so yeah there's that i wanted to make mention as well about you don't have to use a character either you can use the archetype of an object or an ability or a power as well and the energy of that. Uh, if I didn't know anything about the druid but I wanted to work with um, some of the spells that the druid use, uh, I could use something like this. A lot of games have uh, built-in merchandise that you can pick up and play with as well. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in terms of like creating rituals and spells that would revolve around using um, the built-in game system. So instead of me creating like a hundred different spells um, from scratch, what I'm going to do is use the spell cards to figure out sort of what areas I want to work on, um, how I can improve my character, improve myself, and also just gives me something to go to start towards, like prompts. Um, one of the cards is about speaking with animals. So that would be really fun to do with some path working, some meditation, astral work, visual work, creative work as well, um, in terms of drawing and creating, and that's something else you can explore with your character as well. If they have particular skills, uh, for example, like a bard has a lot of singing and inspirational skills, songwriting, uh, just things like that, so you can sort of take on those characters as well. There's so much out there. like. It blows my mind and I could not even begin to put it all into a video. So I'm going to leave you some links as well to the D&D classes, races and background. I'm going to leave you some links to some books, to topics about archetypes and of course there's some exercises and journaling prompts this week and also I've done a very mini tarot spread that you can use um, to work with your character and connect with the energy of it. I'm going to do mine and put it on Instagram and also on Patreon later on so you can have a look at just the cards and how I use the cards as well. And if you don't use tarot or are interested in it, I am also going to leave you links to Eclectic Tarot which is a site where you can find out about different decks and I'm also going to leave you a link to the Fool's Dog app which is an app that you can uh, use to buy tarot decks on your phone. So you don't actually have to go out and buy a deck. You can use it on your phone um, just for this exercise. Uh, if you do it quickly enough, <laughs> you can do the exercise and return the tarot app, but you want to work with the tarot cards itself. So I have not done that before, but sometimes there are decks that I have bought and I think these decks are just horrible. I'm going to return them. But um, like, like if we don't really jive with the tarot, um, but just want to explore it, I think there's a lot of free stuff as well without going to full stock apps as well, where you can just pull cards. Um, like Colette Baron-Reed has one, I think. 
Um, I know Stephen D. Farmer has ones where you can just pull three cards. Like you could just do something like that if you want to. Um, a lot of people who watch my channel I know already have more tarot decks than I own. So you can start with that. Um, or you can just use them as journaling prompts if you don't really want to work with tarot or any other divination system you have, like ruins or yeah, anything you want to do. The questions are there for you to use and utilize and start working with this character because when it comes to week four, topic four, which will be up next month, we're going to use those characters to actually start mapping out our quest and figuring out what we want to do. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything I want to talk about this week. Uh, you can find um, a lot more description and uh, me talking a little bit more about how I created my characters and all the resources on Patreon, um, which I will leave below. Again, you know, if you would like to support me, there are some tiers or reward tiers that you can do to do that, um, starting from a dollar all the way up to thirty dollars a month, and that's really would be great if you guys could support me. But if not, thank you for for watching this video and sticking with me as I work through this um, magical system myself and creating this system myself and giving you guys some way to start because it's always hard to start these um, magical journeys when you have not much of an idea of where to start or resources. So yeah, so thanks for watching and I will talk to you all next month in October. Bye guys.